Welcome to my transparent watercolor narrated tutorial, Small Daisy Painting. The photograph on the right was the reference for this painting. It wasn't my intention to copy this photograph, but just to use it as a reference for a grouping of daisies and to use it as a reference point for the shape of a daisy. I wanted this to be a fairly simple painting for this demonstration, so one of the things I've done is keep it small. This is a five by seven inch piece of watercolor paper. The painting on the right is for a video that I've done previously, and it's a much larger format, and it's more involved uh, in the negative painting than the smaller version. So the one on the right is a half sheet of watercolor paper, 15 inches by 20 inches, compared to the one on the left that we're gonna do for this video, which is only five by seven inches. You can see as I put my hand here, this is a small piece of paper we're working on. And as I zoom in, you lose that frame of reference and, and don't realize how small it is. I'm going to begin this video with the sketch, and I'm actually going to have it set to two times normal speed so that we can get through the sketch a little quicker. And I'm going to place the photo in the top left corner there. And I'm not trying to copy each petal. I'm just trying to interpret what's there and give the suggestion of the uh, shape and the placement of these petals. When I do a painting like this, I, I always want to run some of the uh, petals and some of the shapes off the edge of the paper. It, it keeps it from just floating in space and it just creates a nice design and gives some opportunities to do some nice shape making. Uh, with the way that these petals or uh, stems or leaves, whatever the case is, how they uh, interact with the edge of the paper. Here I'm putting in a second flower shape and I begin with the center of the flower. You can see I'm not trying to copy the one on the photo which is turned completely sideways. I want to see more of the center. And I radiate those petals out from the center. That's how I start with a lot of these. I put the center in and radiate the petals out and these petals start to overlap and go underneath one another and that creates some interesting shapes as those petals interact and I've talked to another one here in the top left and most of that's hidden but you just get to see elements of it so my intent here is to let the viewer solve a lot of this uh, composition for themselves I'll have petals that'll merge into one another and then just no edges and it'll just disappear When I do uh, paintings of uh, daisies or sunflowers I like to do, I, I normally start with the center of these flowers and like to create interesting textures in them and then I build my painting from these. So I've started by applying uh, a very liquid wash of uh, yellow ochre and now I'm touching it just a little bit with a mixture of yellow ochre and quinacridone coral. Then I come in and I put a little bit of salt on it and it helps create an interesting texture for the center of the flower. Here you can see it is dried. I don't use salt very often but occasionally I do in limited applications when it's going to give me the textural quality that I'm after. I'm putting down a light wash of sap green and cad yellow light then I hit it with a fine mist spray bottle to diffuse that color. A lot of this composition is going to be light and white and uh, just diffusing this color away from the center of these flowers and kind of radiates out just gives me a nice effect uh, for the color that I'm going to have in this composition. And I take the same approach here with the other two flowers, putting the cad yellow light and sap green and then spraying it out with a fine mist spray bottle. And here I do it to the third flower. When I do use a spray bottle, I rarely spray it straight at the paper. I'm normally using it uh, at an angle to create some sort of a directional flow with the spray. Next, I'm going to start working in some of the negative space. Uh, this is a wash of sap green with just a touch of pyro red in it to um, keep it from being so raw. You can see here I'm painting these shapes. Uh, they're interrupted by petals that overlap other petals. So it's one of the things that helps create some interest in some of the shapes that um, I, I 
develop here in, in negative space. And I look for those shapes where the overlap occurs and uh, just paint in some of those negative areas. And by working in those negative areas and painting those with a darker value, it starts to send the shape of the flower forward. Here I continue to look for interesting shapes that are created by the intersection of petals from the various flowers. And I keep painting in negative areas around these flowers. And I don't tell the whole story. I try to give just enough information to give an indication of what's happening there. Right here I'm painting just enough on the edge of those, that petal to, to suggest that there is a flower petal there. But I let it disappear into white space that's being shared by other petals that are running into the same space. And I leave it up to the viewer to make some decisions on what they're seeing. But I try and give just enough indication to start telling the story. Here I'm starting to provide some more information on what's going on closer to the center of these flowers. And little by little I'll start to build my values. When I'm doing this kind of brush work I like to use this quill brush I'm using. It's not a small brush but it comes with a fine point. It holds a lot of paint so I don't have to constantly reload. And it's capable of making a larger mark if I need to. But it's got the, such a nice point on it. and. Uh, it's really good for making these types of marks. The, the smaller brushes I find they don't hold so much paint so you have to keep reloading but I can go pretty far with this brush and uh, get the detail that I want. I did my drawing with a 2B pencil and uh, now I want to erase some of those pencil marks so I have less definition of what I originally drew. The more detailed your drawing is, the, the more structured your painting is going to be. And I'm at a point now where I've got enough information to start to tell a story of uh, what's going on in this composition. And I don't want all these pencil marks because some of these areas I want to be large, open, white spaces. So I just take a, a, an eraser at this point and uh, get rid of most of those marks and it doesn't bother me that some of it stays behind I think it gives us some character but uh, the majority of them I try to get erased now I'm going to come in and do more of what I've been doing but I'm using a darker value and uh, there's times here where I try and make it look like this dark value is moving behind this flower and it, it breaks up the tone that I've already put there but gives a suggestion of something that's back even deeper in space so I try to give more dimension to the negative space than just one flat wash I've seen some people do negative paintings where they basically put one value wash outlining a shape and it's negative painting but it's, it, there's not a lot of interest in the, in the actual negative space when I try to develop an area of negative space, I try and make it as interesting as anywhere else in the composition, sometimes even more interesting than what's happening on the uh, uh, subject that I'm trying to uh, enhance by the negative painting. Here I'm going to paint a few larger, darker valued shapes and let some of that run off to the edge of the paper too. Oftentimes when I'm painting some of these smaller areas and uh, I don't just fill them up there, I, I'll make a, a linear mark and make it look like that mark is continuing on behind other petals and reappearing in between the various petals. Now I'm going to take some more of the sap green and just lay some uh, pigment down and I'm going to come back in and hit that area with a spray to help soften and diffuse the uh, edges on what I just on the marks I made.
I'm going to do a bit more of the same on this other flower. Take this sap green and then I'm going to hit it with a spray and diffuse it a little bit. So I have a variety of hard and soft edges in the composition and I have a lot of lost edges. Now I'm going to take a small 8 by 10 inch mat and put it over my painting. And I think I'm done. So this isn't a real complex piece. It does get you working on negative space. It has you simplifying the shapes. And it takes a willingness not to tell the whole story. There's, a, I think, a tendency to want to paint all those petals. But I really, in, in actuality, I haven't painted any of these flower petals. I'm telling the whole story by using negative painting and working in the space around it. I hope you enjoyed this and thanks for watching. I recently started a Facebook group called Rick Swords Watercolor Friends and Subscribers. You can find it by searching for that title on Facebook. If you have questions about the materials I use, I try to keep an updated list of my materials on the studio page of my website, rsurwitzart.com. If you have specific questions, you can email me at contactrsurwitzart.com at gmail.com.